Hello out there. Thanks for joining us. My name is Kate Soto. I'm the social media manager for KNL. This is KNL Live. We are here today to talk about Sauvignon Blanc from the Loire Valley. We build this as a Sancerre episode, um, and we certainly will be talking about Sancerre, but we um, have a few surprises in, uh, in, the, in the area. Um, and we're going to have Keith Mabry. He is our Loire Valley buyer. He's going to join us, and he's an encyclopedia of knowledge. So I see him here. Let's invite him to join us. Mr. Keith, how's everyone doing today? Did you have a nice Memorial Day weekend? There he is. Hey. Hello, Hello. how are you? Good, how are you? Got Cindy watching. Hi, Cindy. Hey, Cindy. Um, how are you doing? What's up? You know, I, I've, been, I've been getting ready for summer, so I'm drinking a lot of Sauvignon Blanc. That's my spirit grape. So, or at least it's my favorite go-to grape. I absolutely adore the flavor profile, and we got this new Loire newsletter, so it's uh, fun to be fun to kind of run through a range of a bunch of different Sauvignon Blancs today. So you never uh, told me that it was your spirit grape. Remember, we were talking about that years ago, and uh, I didn't know that about you. Well, yeah, I probably have like a bunch of spirit grapes, but definitely this is like in that. You know, the, the, I have the, the, the Sauvignon Blanc crystal, so it's like, you know, I sort of prey on it whenever I, I have a glass. <laughs> so, Definitely. you know, so yes, we had the Loire Valley newsletter, so anybody who um, wants to learn more about the Loire, check out our website or our blog. We have a lot of wonderful wines on there. But the reason we, we focused on Sancerre is because the last time you and I were tasting, um, you said something about how... You know, critics don't always get it. Sancerre is is not is 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 a really respected um, wine, but it's also you know not as celebrated around the world as like Chardonnay or Riesling. Um, and but there's so much to it, and so I just thought this would be a good time to talk about what is what it is. What's so what's amazing about Sancerre? Well, let's just say Sauvignon Blanc in general first. But you know, Sauvignon okay. Blanc. Definitely one of the noble grape varieties. You know, it, it's very reflective of its terroir. It does have, like Riesling, it has some very singular, very direct flavor profile. So, you know, there's always going to be elements of citrus. Uh, depending on, you know, how it's aged, it can transform sort of the texture of the wine. But it almost never loses that, those varying citrus degrees. You might find anything from grapefruit to kumquat. But, you know, if it's lacking that, then you're probably not in the Sauvignon Blanc category. The other side of it, and probably why critics maybe shy away from it a little bit, is the sort of the caps, capsicum characteristics. And those are the, the vegetal notes that come from the pyrazines that uh, develop in the, in the skin of the grape. And so, you know, those are, can't, we're probably early on a, a bigger turnoff to, to the average consumer and now that, that that's much more under control, so you don't find it quite so heavy. It should be somewhere present. You should get certain green notes within a Sauvignon Blanc because it's you know it's a parent grape with Cabernet Sauvignon, what well, with Cab Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon. So you've got grape variety that well, all three of them are very high in pyrazine content. So if you're only one half dog, you know how bad could it really be? So you know we just. Uh, but it's all about now it's sort of about farming and ripeness and making sure that uh, the grapes get enough, you know, sunlight so that they can kind of burn off some of those really vegetal tones that some people associate with uh, some Sauvignon Blancs. I think we've gotten away from things like the asparagus and the, but I like it when it has kind of a, a bit of a fresh, you know, crisp, maybe English pea note to it or like, you know, pea blossoms. So there should be a little bit of that almost chlorophyll character. And then there's the vegetal or the sort of herbaceous tones that you find for the, for the capsicum character. Anywhere from like jalapenos, when I think it's gone a bit too far, to sort of like sweet bell peppers, you know, that, that can be a very nice thing. The, the British nail it when they don't call it bell peppers, they call it capsicum. Capsicum sounds so much more sexy than It does. Yeah, well, I, I think it sounds more sophisticated. It's definitely more, more so they've, they've kind of got that. So yeah, I think so much 
in Sancerre, right? I mean, in Sancerre, I don't necessarily think of the, the capsicum being a prominent feature. Do you? It was early on, but there were probably the most classic, almost derivative note would be the sort of cat pee characteristic that most uh, like drinkers of Sancerre and Puy Fume back in the day would have pointed to to say that's that's Sancerre. But that yeah. a lot of that profile has, has drifted. Uh, you know, the for almost uh, that very basic characteristic that you would associate with that that smell. And most of that's gone. But you should see, you know, the very classic notes are still hay, maybe a little bit of green hay, uh, definitely those high tone citrus notes, and then maybe a little bit of sort of herbaceousness or little herbal tones underneath all that, which I think provides a really pleasing and very complimentary drinking experience to a lot of food. And that's kind of why I like to drink it so much, because I find Sauvignon Blanc from all over the world to be extremely food friendly, refreshing, great varieties. There's so much brilliant acidity and even the, the flabbiest versions that it's uh, it's something that I can easily order at a bar almost anywhere and at least be satisfied that I'm yeah. going to do halfway decently well. It's so, true. Yeah. You know, sometimes you can get, you can kind of rely on cheap Sauvignon Blanc. It'll still, you still sort of fit in a flavor profile, but cheap Chardonnay can be kind of, you know, a scary order because it could be, it could be all over the spectrum, right? For sure, it can be very clunky. Yeah. So I find that even very mediocre Sauvignon Blanc at a wine bar or like at a restaurant is pleasant enough and always has some varietal character. There's always exceptions, but you know, yeah. but I, you know, I'll, it, usually I, I'll, I'll fall back to a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc because they're very popular, more chain restaurant wine lists. So that's an easy, an easy get for me. And then, you know, if you go to maybe a slightly fancier restaurant, they're going to have a Sancerre, maybe a Puy Fume on the list. And then, uh, and then there's sort of like the, you know, and the, from the region. So Loire, you know, is a long growing region and Sauvignon Blanc probably makes up about 40% of the total plantings throughout the Loire, but it stops, you know, midway through most of the wine cultivation area in Touraine. And so one of the wines we're going to look at today is the VA Orm, which I think is, this is entry level Sauvignon Blanc from Touraine. So for twelve ninety nine, this is kind of like your, my, this is the kind of thing that I'm looking for when I go to a, you know, bar and I don't want to be too hard about it. And I want to do this really inviting that captures all the essence of Sauvignon Blanc without drifting too far afield. It's kind of like, like a tropical uh, or pineapple note to it, I think. And then definitely a little bit of that sweet pepper. Yeah, and as, as sort of ripeness levels have increased over the years, you know, global warming has had that effect. We've seen even some tropical and stone fruit characteristics finding its way uh, into the category, or like into the one. So, you know, for in terrain, it's not as Dude, it's much there's a lot of calcareous there so it's kind of the classic soil characteristic of the Sauvignon Blanc just growing districts in the Loire Valley so I think this wine has you know a lot of those flavor profiles and we always call this the VA Orm we call it sort of our like Sancerre at half the price this is so juicy I mean I think yeah. this is like for $12.99 this is a buy by the case kind of thing mm-hmm so juicy and you get the acid on the side of your tongue so it's like bright and lively but it goes down so easy yeah i mean acidity is key it's for nice. me mm -hmm. i'm mm -hmm. and definitely makes my mouth water mm -hmm. but yeah it's got a little bit of pineapple on the finish there too but it opens with that almost like lime zest or yeah. like lime character it's just like it just activates the palate it just makes yeah. me want to food in my mouth and get Wine behind this. I think it's absolutely like one of the most delicious Sauvignon Blancs in the store. So all the bridal correctness there. And I like this. It's a small little family operation. They're actually in the state. So not terrain. There's a lot of big in there and a lot a lot of uh, Sancerre and Puy Fume producers actually own property in terrain because it helps expand their uh, 
the holdings in which they can make different tiers of Sancerre or different tiers of Sauvignon Blanc in their portfolio. So they may have like, this is our 10 to $15 Sauvignon Blanc. And then our Sancerre is like 20 to 30. And then we have our reserve bottlings that are barrel aged that are like 40, 50 dollars. So, you know, that's why I think like Touraine is one of the best value areas in the Loire. So, and, and, and there's a bit more openness in terms of rules of planting. You can plant Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, you know, Reds, you can plant Pinot Noir, Cabernet Franc, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, to, uh, Gamay, Pinot Doni, all kinds of crazy stuff. Hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of things going on in Touraine. And uh, it's, a, it's a region more famous for its castles probably than production, but the wine production, I think we all benefit from it. So. It's a, uh, uh, best kept secret kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of those places, if you ever go to the Loire, you'll probably go because you want to go see like the historical castles in the region. And then not far, just across the river, if you go a little bit further to the west, you'll end up in Bouvray and Mont Louis. And so that's what your Shannon producing regions. But that's where the cave dwelling troglodyte people live, you know, people who you know, carved houses, limestone, uh, as it sort of butts up against the river. And it was, all those caves were formed by uh, the quarry and mine the caves and pull out all the limestone and then people would move in after, like a hmm. crab moving into a shell, so, an empty shell. But anyways, further back up. So Touraine, I think, you know, tremendous value and really and is, it, is it limestone? I mean, I know, I know, some, um, that in general, you know, we talk a lot about the soils in Sancerre and soils with Sauvignon Blanc. So do you know what the um, soils are in terrain? Yeah, it's going to be all like a calcareous limestone. So okay. lots of clay, lots of, like, the limestone base very much. So, but with lots of clay, maybe some gravels, but mostly clay, you know, depending on where they are on the hill. But it's that very calcareous clay. So that helps maintain and give the wines that brilliant acidity. Cool. Do you want to move on? Yeah, let's go to, uh, so let's go upriver uh, to like classic Sancerre and, and taste the sherry. Yeah, and so the, the soils are actually a bit, they're still all calcareous. Everything in Sancerre is very calcareous. It's part of the sort of Kimmeridgian marl uh, in this Kimmeridgian soil that was carved out you know, especially in the last four ice ages. And this area links parts of Champagne, Chablis, the cliffs of Dover across, you know, in England. And so all of this was, you know, have been not, that not so much carved out, that was carved out by the ocean, but, but the Loire basically and other rivers that probably don't exist anymore sort of weathered down and a lot of glacial activity weathered down these, these hills and dove into that Kimmeridgian marl. So marl is just a high calcare, you know, like a very compacted clay. And then also mixed in with that is hard limestone that's all like sort of shattered and turned into gravels. So you have limestone. And in, interspersed with all of that, especially along the river, the river's edge is uh, what they call silex, which is a flint-based soil. And so you'll find it sort of a calcareous mixed with flint and you get these smokier edges, especially to the, for the plantings that are closer, closest to the river, especially mm -hmm. in the Sancerre. The Sancerre is primarily that Camaragi Marl, which they call Terre Blanche. And then they have the uh, gravelly soil, which they call the limestone gravel, which they call Coyote. And so, and then there's another type of like soil that's a very soft chalk that you can, you know, use to write on a, a chalkboard. Mm -hmm. They don't really, that's not heavily used for wine, wine production, uh, but it is in the area. So the so, Chariot is really, it's a really different expression than the terrain. Yeah, so when you're in Sancerre, you maybe side by side, it's easier to make that comparison. But I think the, you're, you'll find much more of the characteristics, very classic characteristics in the Chariot. And, yeah. and here I think, you get in a little bit of stone fruit, where there was like the VA orm was sort of leaning into like fun fruity trot all surrounding that framework of lime. This, you know, 
gets into that sort of great fruity aspect, but I get a lot of peach and kind of nectarine and things like that in there as well. I was thinking more along the lines of like a pear skin kind of mm. but and even a little bit of the chalky I think from the, the soil here. That's fine. Mm of Sancerre is that sort of chalky. There should be a sort of an undercurrent of chalkiness in there. So the Cherrier is actually from all three types of soil. All the parcels are planted. And this is sort of a happy medium blend amongst all the different parcels that they have. Some down by the river, some in the gravels, and some on the Terre Blanche soils. So you get do that sort of... Do you want to show the bottle again? Yeah, and this only... This is has consistently, let's see if I can get it where the- uh, Yeah, it's a little is. bit of a shine. There you go. There. Anyways, folks, we will post all these bottles in the um, in the description at the end. So, you know, come back and visit that if you have any questions. And hey, if you have any questions, give us a shout out, make a comment. We're gonna, you know, ask uh, he's Mr. Encyclopedia here. He's got all the, he's got a lot of information for you. Do you have any questions? I know I need to get it out of my head. <laughs> Anyways, do you want to move on to the next one? Sure. Should we do Lord Dizal? No, we're actually going to do Tower Day. So okay. sort of typically the most classic expressions blocks. And so Tower Day is another producer. So they're actually their 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 production facility is just across the street from Cherrier. They're in the village of Verdigny in the Sancerre region. But Taberday is more famous for their Puy Fumé. They have a couple holdings in Sancerre, but we focus on their on the Puy Fumé. And so the winemaker now is Maurice uh, Taberday. And he's the, you know, the son in charge. His parents are still very actively involved. Uh, his mother, I think, was there doing all of the books when I paid a visit. And so we did a, a tour of their Puy Fumé holdings. And so Puy Fumé is right across the river. And their, the Silex on Puy Fumé side is much more prominent. So you're going to find a lot more in, in the wines from that region. And that's what the, the Puy Fumé, that Fumé is the smoke. And that's kind of the, de the defining characteristic of Puy Fumé, is that flintiness. And the flint always gives you this mineral smoky edge to it, sometimes gun flinty, you know, sometimes like a little bit of uh, like, um, like a little bit of that, not a metallic twang to it, but almost like, you know, like gun polish or something like that. So, you know, there's always a, a really like that sort of more, instead of like that sort of chalkiness, I always think you're, you know, they find Puy Fumé as having much more of that, um, like that, that inflected mineral metallic, you know, mm. Yeah, this is so this is so pretty. It's so delicious. It's twenty one ninety nine. Twenty one ninety nine. There's just so also, much going on on the palate. It's like right. so it's if anybody the, is in one of our wine clubs, there is a wine club price on this for people who participate in the wine club as well. Is this so, this this month's wine club? Uh from a few months ago. Mm. Mm. But so they're, they're now organic, certified organic. And they, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of texture in their wine. There's, you know, when they're producing Sauvignon Blanc in this region, they leave it on the skins for a day or so. Not for, not to get sort of an orange skin contact characteristic. It's really more about creating some oxidation in the musk, but it, it helps put a little bit of the, a little bit more structure, almost pithiness in the wine, which I think is a long-term balance. Like this wine just has incredible structure, great acidity, but it grabs the palate in a different way than the sort of the mouth-watering a orm where you're just like salivating because it's that burst of lime and pineapple. And here, I, it's like you're you are eating that grapefruit and you're just like you're salivating. But like more is happening underneath it, all of it. It's yeah, and there's just so much texture. I feel like it, my mouth is still filled with it. 
Yeah. Really long finish. So we've got a few comments. Best Puy Fumé ever from Sharon. Deja says, so much quality in that wine. We've got it. Uh, these varietals are my love language by Joe. And uh, a go Keith, Charles Kelly. Shout out to, to, to my peeps. Your peeps, my yeah. Father. So, yeah, so I'm, so in terms of like the big distinction between the three, so you have Touraine, you know, great entry level, always your daily drinker, the Sancerre, just, you know, it, it, it offers all of the classic sort of like chalky notes to it. And that Tabardet, even for a couple bucks more, just adds this intensity and weight to it that I think sort of belies its more humble price point, comparatively, you know. Yes. You're, if you were buying Burgundy, you'd probably be spending twice as much money, maybe three times as much money. So, yeah, this probably. definitely over delivers for twenty one ninety nine. Yeah, and good. these are all stainless steel wines too. Just the first three, so it gives us a, a good sense of like the purity of the grape variety. Just a little bit of nuance between the soils can make a, a big difference, you know. So let's let's talk about like one of our favorite producers. We added. Portfolio you know, up to four years ago now. Aurora does that. So the winery is actually called Des Chassain, but she bottles under the sort of the focus of the label is on, on her. And I think she's one of our more exciting and interesting producers that we've added in the last couple of years. And into the Loire category. So her and her partner. Uh, David Gerard, no, not our David Gerard, David Osen Gerard, but no, her, her husband is David Gerard also. So uh, not that big of a coincidence, considering that almost everybody in the Loire Valley, especially in Sancerre, there's probably like 10 family names, like Cherrier, Deza, Cota, Crochet. There's, They're all you know, probably three to five different producers. So this one's 19.99. This is her entry level bottle, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is the entry level wine. This is kind of on a mix of the three primary soil types, mostly Terre Blanche, that Kimmeridge and Carl, and, and Kaya. Um, but yeah, this is kind of her all encompassing style. And I think you know, here we're uh, the vintage too. 2019 is a really lovely, very ripe vintage. But there's so much, it was almost a near, it was about as near perfect vintage as they could have hoped for. So the last, you know, several years, they've had multiple frost vintages throughout the Loire. I, you know, in terms of like the amount of damage, uh, 2016 was really bad. 17 was challenging, but not terrible. 18, same thing. 19, they're like, oh, thank God, you know, we finally have a full crop and the set was really good and the weather was great. So they were really fortunate uh, to sort of recoup some of that. And then 2020 looks pretty strong as well. 2021 is still uh, kind of sussing out where the disaster may have. A lot of frost, right? I mean, I know all over France they got frost this year. All, yeah. And it tends to happen worse in the more lower-lying lower areas further west than the Loire. Sancerre so is fortunate because it's – since it's very hilly, a lot of the coldest plot, the cold air stinks. And so if there's no good air circulation, then it sort of sits and rests, and that's what causes the damage. And basically, this is where global warming has had a big problem, is the, uh, the flowering happens much earlier in the season than it used to, because they wouldn't get a shutdown. Where the, so they've had one out of 10 years, you'd have a frost vintage. And now it's like about every other year, you can have a frost effective, frost effective vintage. So a lot of now is pruning. So they have to prune later and later and later. And I think in this region, a lot of people have learned to at least to mitigate is you just wait till the very last minute to prune. And then hopefully that arrests bud break and, and the flower development so that when it starts that process and the, the frost does come like a bit later, which it does, has been pretty consistent, then it doesn't create such havoc and damage in the vineyard. So anyways, the wine, what do you think? 
Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, I get a lot of grapefruit, you, almost like a little bit of a floral note there too. Um, it's really pretty. Lots of texture. It's a little bit different than that Pui Fume that kind of had the, the really, really full mouth. This one's just more of a balanced, but lots of texture the whole way through. It's not quite as much grip on the finish as the Pui Fume. Mm -hmm where like you can really feel the texture of that wine, but it still has a really nice pack on the front where yeah. I think it opens up. Uh, Does this one see a little bit of barrel? No, well, it may go into large format barrel, but it's not like barrel aged. Right, so, okay. but it's it's just, it feels a little bit fuller than yeah. Perrier. Ah, but wait, let's shut that. Okay, let's do it. Want to show the bottle? So the Les Chastain is, so here's Aurora, her signature. She, her, she wears uh, glasses. So she has her signature glasses sort of in, you know, in the little cartoon character. So look for that. So this does go through some barrel. And this is all from primarily the coyote. So, which are, they, they call this the Le Chassain. And oh, there's a lot of wineries that make a Le Chassain. It's not a specific vineyard designate. It's more, this is parcel selection, but it's not, but it's not like a defined thing in, in the region. It's people use that to define a specific type of parcel, which is usually much more gravelly soil. Mm. Hmm. So this is where critics are missing out because, you know, all of this is, everything else is just great, beautiful drinking, highly, you know, available in terms of, or accessible. But now we're, I think, getting the much more serious style of what Sauvignon Blanc can, can be. I, I'm not big on over heavy oaking on Sauvignon Blanc because I, unless it's like a white Bordeaux where they can, there's something, you know, with some semi-own or something like that that can kind of absorb some of that characteristic where you're going to age that one for 20 years. But here, I think you really get, like, what can happen. It just sort of, it gives some accent spices to it. It takes the that lemon character, like Meyer lemon, but makes it almost like lemon verbena. Like, you get these yeah. floral. This is beautiful. Yeah, very, very very classic it you know so there's a one of our top producers in the region or the, the main factual, and mm -hmm. their biodynamic producer well you know one of the more sought after and they do all these single vineyard single parcel wines and like those are their single parcel ones are like 60 you know 70 bucks this is 30 bucks and i think it's it it reaches right up there yeah i mean Especially in the finish, you get like this jasmine, beautiful white floral characteristic to it. And it's really textured. Mm. Mm. The palette is spectacular. Yeah, it really is. And there's even awesome some, finish. Yeah, there's even some, you know, like a little bit of like rich apple pear note on the finish too. Mm -hmm. It's a really expansive wine. Oh my God, there's just so much happening there. Yeah, so, so that's twenty nine ninety nine. Do you want to show the bottle? I'm just everybody. Yep. So twenty nine. I think that's an absolutely stunning value for for what like it drinks at a quality level that definitely reaches beyond its price point. So we talked right. about it all being some um, Sauvignon Blanc today, but we'd be remiss if we didn't visit a little bit of Sancerre Rouge while we're in the yeah. region. Yeah. So, so we so have Aurora's, so all the Rouge is Pinot Noir. Yeah, and that and is uh, $19.99. $19.99, also the 2019 vintage, which is relatively newly landed. And the, so Pinot has been, you know, kind of interesting for this region because if you really loved cool climate Pinot, this was the place for you. You wanted a light and spicy and peppery, almost slightly underripe in style, kind of like fruity and floral in an almost crunchy gamay way. Yeah, crunchy was my, my, my word of choice here. There's a lot of berry fruit and it's fresh, almost like fresh out of the fridge, kind of crunchy. 
Yeah, but so, but now we're starting because of that sort of climate change, seeing a lot more, a little more warmth and richness in the wine. So what you see curry is starting to get a little bit more silky. And so I think we're sort of finding our way into like Marcinet territory, you know, if we were talking about Burgundy in comparison. So, you know, the cooler side of Burgundy still, but with a little bit more crunchy red fruit quality to it. But, you know, then there are some producers that are making very rich, very deep styles, but, you know, it requires a bit more like, long, longer hang time. Better site selection, too. You know, most Pinot Noir was primarily for rosé production. So now as the Pinot starts to get riper and more intense, I think we may see a little bit of, you know, better site selection for Pinot Noir. This is such a food friendly pinot too i mean it's you know it's sort of medium bodied it's really silky in tannins um lots of spice and fruit there but you could pair this with prosciutto you could put a chill on it and then you could bring it to a picnic this would be great with a pork chop this just feels like a summertime sip and wine for sure like deal. yeah i mean keep it you know there's something this I do agree, like a light chill on that is definitely highly, it's a really, really fun, crunchy red. You know, I think if you like lighter Oregon Pinots or you've enjoyed, uh, like I said, some of those like lighter, maybe even like a, some Bourbon Rouge, this is just yeah. sort of in that category. And it still maintains like a really, really in, inviting price point. So for, you know, still at 20 yeah. bucks. Of That's half the price of a, an Oregon Pinot, for sure. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely yeah. some people that are in the sort of 20 to 30 range, and I think this is every bit of the way. You know, and like these always range in the lower alcohol level. Mm -hmm. That's a concern for most people. So these tend to be more in the 13, 13 5 percentile still. So strangely for the tariffs, some of them started to get over 14% before they <laughs> alcohol. Well, luckily that's a, hopefully a thing of the past, knock on wood. Same thing. So hopefully, hopefully the, uh, the, the, uh, the people who dish out tariffs aren't watching. So just yeah. that. All right, folks. Well, that's our lineup. Um, yeah. I don't know. Do you have anything that you want to add about Sancerre? Great vintage, great prices, a beautiful yep. array of wines. It's 2020, very strong. That The VA Orm is 2020, so you can kind of see already like where that's going. Everything else, except for the uh, Le Chassin, is, which, was, which is also a very vintage. A um, little more a little more warmth and richness in a lot of the 2018s, but that wine has such great acidity. I think it's got a few more years of really, really, really drinking ahead of it, maybe even getting a little bit better. Same with that Tower Day. I mean, honestly, if you discovered a few bottles of that in five or 10 years, I think you're going to be blown away just by how beautifully structured that wine is. And that's their entry level wine, which is crazy. And they make some beautiful higher end wines that are like just absolutely stunning. So I can't stress how much I enjoy these producers and what kind and generous people they are and we should support them because they're, they're doing they're doing God's work out there. <laughs> yeah. And so, you're bringing it home. I there I'm merely a vessel to deliver it to you. Yeah. So. Well, thank you for bringing us some wine and thank you for joining us today. Yeah. Um, thanks to all who who tuned in. If you have questions, you know, always feel free Holy crap. Um, let us know what you want to see on a live coming up or if you have any questions about anything. Sauvignon Blanc, k and um, You know what the weather's going to be like. Drop us a line. Yeah, come there on uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. For the yeah. Walking around the Loire section. That's right. In LA. In LA. All right. See you All guys right. later. All right. Sounds All good. Right. Thanks.